All right, everybody. Welcome back. We are going to set up some buses. And we're going to be setting up serial buses for submixing common instrument groups and uh, types. We're going to base it a lot on the groups that we set up already um, previously in our session here. And we're going to reference our instructions here to create stereo buses for each instrument group. So that's going to mean looking at what we got and um, making some, you know, sensible choices for combining things in series that can then be processed together or can give us a single fader for level setting and that sort of thing. So first things first, I am going to take a look at our cajon and tambourine group here. And so we want these to essentially... Uh, live together in the same bus that would be used just like if this was a full drum set we're going to set up a drum bus of sorts so we can go to track new or command shift n or if you're on windows then that would be control shift n and we're going to set up some new tracks um, so for right now we want to do command and down arrow to make it an aux input and command and right arrow to make it a stereo aux input and we're going to create that guy this is now going to give us an aux input right here next to the original tracks that we were working with but we're going to need to rename this so i like to name my buses with a lowercase b as the initial character um, that just makes it more identifiable as we're looking through the um, mix window or looking through the edit window is a little more obvious because you can see there's no audio here. There's just kind of that volume automation line. And But anyway, it's a personal preference, so you do how you like. If it helps you, then use it. And if it's not helpful, then don't use it. There you go. Uh, so we need to get audio into our drum bus here. So... If I'm looking into the um, I.O. map that I kind of inherited from uh, the session when it was created, there weren't any um, leftover buses in there. They were all already used. So just for the sake of being quick, I'm going to go into the setup and I.O. menu. And we're going to look at our bus tab here. And I'm going to set my internal buses in other words routing from pro tools to pro tools without actually leaving um, the computer uh, i'm going to default those internal buses just to give me a bunch of empty ones to work with for now and we're going to go ahead and assign the first unused bus which will be bus one and two and that's not going to be super helpful later in the session once we start building lots and lots of buses. So I want to right click on that guy and rename bus one and two the exact same thing that my aux input is called. So now my pathway to the drums bus is also named drums bus. And so now all I need to do is get my cajon and shift click my tambourine to select them both together and now that they're both selected option is due to all option shift is due to selected so option shift or alt shift on windows we're going to assign the outputs of those drums tracks into the drums bus okay now if i was to solo my tambourine here Everything in the entire session gets muted, including the aux input that I'm routing that tambourine through. So I need to make sure that when this guy or this guy gets soloed, that we don't lose our audio or make me have to solo two things every time I solo this one. So we want to solo safe this. So I'm going to command click on the solo button or control click if you're on Windows. And that way, when I solo my tambourine now, everything in the entire session is muted, but not my aux uh, input that this is actually being routed through. 
Okay, so those tambourines are set. They're now outputting into the drum bus. And you'll notice none of my outputs are set yet. I'm not worried about that yet. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, but I'm going to need to fix that before we're going to be able to hear any of this stuff. So right now, we're just going to go through and reset up our buses. So I'm going to grab my claps and move them back over here now. Okay, since I want my claps kind of considered part of the percussive element of the um, track, there's certainly not any melody going on there. So um, I'm going to go ahead and create a bus for my claps tracks, but we've done it the long way and we've done it the hard way, but I've noticed because I read my instructions, Brendan has revealed the sacred knowledge and so we're going to spend the rest of this with sacred knowledge that usually i don't teach you guys i usually wait until you have discovered that on your own independently and kind of go through it the hard way but this really is the most efficient and fastest way in order to um, output all of the tracks through the output window settings in the io setting here um, but just selecting new tracks so let's check that out and we'll see how that works so here's our claps one through four that again option is due to all option shift is due to selected so i'm going to hold option shift and choose the output for any one of those tracks but instead of outputting to an empty bus and renaming it and yada yada we're going to go to new track okay so option shift and click new track and now it's set up to give us a stereo aux input and that name aux one is not going to be useful so since this is a serial bus, I'm going to name it starting with a lowercase b, and this is our claps bus now. Okay, so the claps bus is created. It's named the bus that gets audio from the output of these tracks is created. It is named. The only thing we need to do here now is command click to solo safe and we are in business. So there we go. Now we've got a bass track that obviously doesn't need a bus. It's just a single mono track, but we did create a rhythm group earlier and so for the sake of, you know, just keeping everything clean and submixing down the line, I'm going to take my drum bus and command click on my claps bus and command click on the bass track. And now, independently, those three things are selected. So holding Option and Shift, I'm going to output those guys to a brand new track that will be a stereo aux input named lowercase b r h y and that spells rhythm bus kids moving along our rhythm bus needs to be solo safed and we're good to go on that so here we have our viola tracks okay in this session these violas are just acoustic guitars um, so we're going to have those guys selected and again we're going to just need to click on the first one and shift click on the last one to get all of them selected uh, contiguously and holding option and shift to do to selected will set them to a new track that is a stereo aux input named lowercase b capital gtr for our guitar bus and uh, I'm sorry, command click to solo safe, and we're good. Now, uh, the vocals, if you remember, we have several vocals here, but vocal one and two are our lead vocalists and the primary lines and harmonies, where vox three through seven are all um, crowd and hook vocal backup type vocals. So I'm going to go ahead and make a all vocal bus for all of these guys but we're going to have a lead vocal bus happening first um, for vox one and two so we'll select vox one and vox two and set these guys to output to a new track 
that is a stereo aux input called vocal bus lowercase b capital vox okay now our vocal bus and all of our background vocals can now be output to a new track that will be a lowercase vocals okay so all the vocals are going into the full vocal bus where the vox bus is just our lead now if we want to do separate compression on just the lead vocals if we want to have overall reverb sends coming from all the vocals to share them in the same space we have all these options if we want to do nothing we don't have to do anything here so what i want to do finally though is make a uh, little session interchangeability type of setup going on here so we have our drums and our claps and our bass all feeding the rhythm bus and right now the outputs aren't working quite yet for my system here um, and we now have a rhythm bus and a guitar bus and a, um, a vocals bus that all need to be output into the system. So what I like to do, and again, this is a preference thing, is option and shift and send all of these guys into a final stereo aux input mix bus this is going to be the entire mix now everything in this session is all internally routed together through sub mixing through all of our buses finally into the mix bus if i bring this session to another studio and i need to change the output to match their io this will be the only bus that needs to be changed this will be the single output that needs to be fixed if that is the case. So first thing I'm going to do is get up into my setup and into my IO and remap my outputs to match uh, the current saved system. So we can see in here built in output one and two was set to a path that's no longer um, available in my system. So all I have to do, I don't need to rename any of that stuff. All I need to do is change the output mapping to match my analog one and two, which feeds my monitors here. Then in my default output bus, right now the defaults are set to something that's gonna output directly into my monitors. Instead, I'm gonna change the mono output to go into my mix bus that I have created internally in my session. And then I'm gonna set up my stereo output to go internally into my mix bus so now when we create new tracks and add along uh, side of things in our session maybe we're doing some parallel processing some reverbs every time i make a new track it's going to automatically output it into my mix bus so let's check out our instructions next and look at that we need some parallel processes. We're going to need some reverb and some stereo delays. Okay, so what we're going to do here is get onto um, our I.O. setup. Okay, and we're going to build those paths into the I.O. setup. So we've already done our, our first bus, kind of the old hard way, just pulling out the aux input and adding a bus and renaming and doing all that. Then we did the rest auto-magically with our new track dialog box. Now we're going to do a different way, in which case we're going to go up into the setup and I.O. menu and in our bus tab, in our I.O. mapping um, of all of the paths that are available for the whole system, and you'll see where we've created buses that ended up in here as well, um, we're going to create our own new paths. And we are going to want to make them stereo. And we're going to want to give them a name, but we need four of them. So let's go ahead and make those right now. So we want them all to be stereo. 
Okay, and we want two reverbs, and let's just check real quick again and make sure that I got that right. Yep, two stereo reverbs and two stereo delays. Okay, so let's just say for now, I'm going to just name them verb one and verb two, because we don't necessarily know what we want to use them for yet. And I'll name this one delay one and delay two. Now we could just make some decisions here already and make one a hall verb and one a chamber verb or one a long delay and one a short delay, something like that. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. Um, we do though. I want to make sure auto create sub path is checked. That way, if we want to send something specifically to the left side or specifically to the right side, those paths will be available, um, the mono paths that create each of these stereo buses. So we'll create that. And now if we scroll down and look, we can see that we've got verb one and there's verb one left and right and verb two and delay one and delay two and so on. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK here. Those are done. Now... I want to build them into the session. So command shift N and we're going to make four stereo aux inputs and create. Okay. Now this guy and this guy and this guy and this guy are all four going to be different things. They're all selected right now and they all need to be renamed. So with them all selected, we can right click and choose rename. And now aux one is going to be verb one. And since we all had them all selected, then we can just hit return. And that brings up the next one in line to be named verb two. And the next one in line will now be delay one. And the next one in line will be delay two. And all we have to do is hit return every time we're done naming it. And it automatically jumps to the next one in the chain. So now we need to set up some inputs. And those are all going to be in order right here. So verb one and then verb two and then delay one. And finally delay two. And you'll notice... I didn't have to readjust and set the outputs. They're all defaulted to go straight to my mix bus, which I'm going to move over here and keep at the end of my session. And command click on each of the solos. And that's it. Now these guys are ready to go. They're ready to get signal and ready to get some inserts up here and get some reverbs and delays and stuff added and make all that mix magic happen. So that's it right now. We just need to do one more thing, and that would be to create our stereo master fader for um, the whole mix. And that's that. So we're going to go to the end of the session, and here's our mix. Command shift N, and little fun tip, command right will give you the option of choosing between mono and stereo, or if you have multiple outputs, then what your um, surround field might be. And command down lets you cycle through what type of track you're creating. So command right and command down a couple times, and that gets us a stereo master fader. Hit OK, and ba-boom, there is our stereo master fader. So we're now set to have all of our tracks submixed into their individual buses, all the buses submixed into our mix bus, and the master fader able to monitor uh, the output of our mix. So that's it. Go ahead and do a save. Make sure you're keeping up with your um, file naming conventions here. We want to have a master session that is untouched and unmessed with and do a save as a mix 01 as you move forward to make sure that you're leaving yourself a safety and a fallback um, in case you need to start all over, which hopefully none of that will happen. But best practices, right? Okay.